Welcome to 100 New Patients. Get ready to learn how to attract more ideal patients, fill your schedule, and maximize your production. Here's your host, Kent Sears. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to 100 New Patients. This is the online event where you have the chance to hear from some of the leading experts across the dental industry. And today, I'm happy to be joined by Zanya Winans. Zanya is the president and owner of Golden Proportions Marketing, which is a full-service agency uh, that, that works with private practices, uh, specialty and multi-location dental practices on, on their uh, marketing. She founded this company in 2001, and they've helped over 1,500 practices since that time um, with their marketing plans and their marketing goals. She's also the founder of Smart Market Dental, uh, which, and I love this, it's a software platform that tracks marketing from the initial lead all the way through to its ultimate value to the practice. And, you know, we've talked a lot about measurement and tracking, so I think that's incredibly valuable. So she's done that as well, very accomplished. You've probably seen her or heard her. She's been at numerous conferences, events, study clubs all around the country. So uh, happy to have her here. Danya, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I love sharing knowledge about marketing. And I know you have a lot of it. So to, <laughs> for the people listening in, um, I'd like to start off, just tell us a little bit about your background and you know, how you got to where you are today and some of the stuff that your company's focused on. Absolutely. So I've been in marketing far longer than when I've had my agency, but because I had the good fortune to marry a dentist, frankly, while he was in dental school, um, I live and breathe dentistry because it's something he's passionate about. And so 16 plus years ago, um, we recognized that there was a need. It was during the cosmetic dentistry boom. And I was obviously handling marketing for him. And then that became an opportunity. People started requesting, you know, could I do marketing for them? So literally overnight, an agency was born and it has grown tremendously over these past 16 years. So our agency, Golden Proportions Marketing, focuses on nothing but dentists. Um, we tend to work with the dentists that I call continuing education junkies, the ones who love to learn something new, love to try new technologies, anything that's going to improve their patients' lives, and that makes it really fun to do marketing for them. Uh, Lee, I know you've, you've been in the industry for a while, as you said. Um, you know, you've seen changes that have happened over, the, over that period of time. And it seems like things have sped up and change is happening at a more rapid pace. Um, and that certainly is having an impact on us. What, what are a couple of the big challenges and trends that you see happening right now uh, that are most prevalent with your clients? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, for one, obviously, digital marketing is huge. It's where it's at. But it is a whole different language for dentists. Most of them just don't even understand the language of pay-per-click marketing and SEO. And therefore, with I've seen literally hundreds of agencies out there that are trying to get dentists' attention, it's very easy for doctors to become, um, I guess, they just have to believe that whoever they're working with is doing the right job for them, which frankly is one of the reasons that we created this software, because I want to create transparency for doctors that they know what they're buying is actually working for them. So that's, that's one big shift. Uh, second big shift, and I'm sure a lot of doctors have seen this, is since, uh, since the recession happened, the demand for insurance-driven practices has grown. We've seen the subsequent rise of the DMOs and DSOs out there, and it's just dramatically changed how to market to patients. It's, it's made it more of a requirement, even for an insurance practice, and it's just made the market 10 times more competitive than it used to be. So yeah, a lot of a lot of dentists today are really struggling with new patient attraction, and um, even beyond that, just getting quality patients in the door too. Right, that's even more of a challenge. Uh, Absolutely. You know, what What's one of the most important things that a dentist can really focus on? And there's so many things, obviously, when they're from marketing. But you know, what What's one of the most important things that they can be focused on right now? So this is going to sound counterintuitive coming from a marketing agency, um, but too often doctors put all of their eggs in the new patient basket. And in reality, what we've seen by measuring all of this is frankly the best marketing the doctors can do is incredible customer service, retention of the patients that they already have. The cost of acquisition of a new patient is significantly higher than the cost of keeping them. And so I would say the best thing is retention, um, 
patient referrals, anything that is brand reputation, online reviews, things like that, the, the new patient leads actually come after all of that because otherwise you're just spinning your wheels, bringing new patients in and watching them go right out the back door. So, so what's, um, I, I know a strategic marketing plan is something that's important to you, putting that together. Help our, you know, help um, our listeners understand how they develop a marketing plan and what that should look like. Okay, so first let me start with why it's important to have a plan. Okay. Um, dentists in particular, I find, tend to be highly attracted, I, I call it shiny object syndrome, but they're looking for that, that one silver bullet, the thing that is going to solve all of their problems. And in reality, it isn't one thing. You're running a business, and just like when you're running a business, you have to look at all the aspects of what it takes to make your company successful, your human resources, your training of your, your team and how you're providing care for people, your marketing of bringing patients in. Well, the same thing happens with developing a marketing plan. It's not just about lead generation. So that plan has to look at every cycle in the sales funnel. Mm -hmm. They have to look at that brand and reputation out there. They have to look at um, the new patient acquisition, retention, advocacy. Is the marketing working? Are we maximizing every dollar that we can get out of the marketing that we've created? So developing a plan is something, you know, doctors can do it themselves to an extent. It usually starts with like a marketing calendar, kind of going through each one of those stages and determining what strategies are going to move them forward towards their end goals. But um, often that can be hard to do. I mean, doctors went to dental school. They didn't go to school to be marketers. So one of the better things they can do is actually hire a consultant or an agency that can take that comprehensive look and develop a plan that really could um, impact anything in the practice that's going to have an effect on the marketing's results. Yes. And let me let me drive into that a little bit more because um, you know oftentimes I think in, in the industry uh, dentists hear the word marketing and they do think about that new patient lead generation right and I think more traditional advertising pay per click or direct mail um, help. You know, I, I think marketing has a broader umbrella, so kind of paint that picture for us. What, what all is included in marketing beyond just the lead generation? Well, I tend to look at it um, in three primary stages. There's the uh, internal marketing, which is, you know, the patient experience, any kind of communication tools that you have with them from email uh, to text messaging to um, just the even old fashioned traditional print marketing to your own existing patients. And then there's external marketing, which is more traditional, the radio, print, television, direct mail, billboards, we've seen bus wraps, there's so many ways to reach people. And that external marketing is still really, really important. Um, the third primary component that everybody is focusing on is just the digital marketing, which is your website, your online reputation, pay-per-click marketing, social media, all of those are critical, but truly doctors have to look at all three sets of those marketing channels because we found there is a dramatic difference between practices that still engage in traditional marketing because it creates consumer awareness so that when they go online and they see you ranking at the top of the list in SEO or pay-per-click or social media, there's already trust created within that brand. So again, and then once you bring them in, you got to retain them, which is where that internal marketing comes in. So those are the three big channels. It's really a 360 view of how they need to approach their marketing. And so, you know, what I hear you saying is traditional marketing is certainly not dead yet. There's a, a place for it and it actually supports the digital marketing, correct? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's funny. I was just talking to a client yesterday doing a review and their digital marketing is blowing it out of the water. But one of the concerns that they had, and I think this was a rightful concern, is they were attracting a lot of millennials because that mm -hmm. they were a generation that yeah. was raised on computers. Yeah. And these millennials don't have a lot of problems with their teeth. Yes. Um, there, there wasn't a lot of restorative work to be done. So while it was generating leads like crazy, it wasn't generating as profitable a patient. And we had done television advertising for years for this client and kind of shifted our strategy earlier this year 
and we have actually made the decision to go back into some flights of television to complement the digital marketing yeah. so that we can reach a broader audience, especially that, that sweet spot of those 55 to 64 year olds that need a lot of work to be done. So well, it, yeah, traditional marketing is nowhere near dead. I think that's a great story too, because it highlights that you really have to think about the marketing mediums that you use. And before you decide upon those, it's really based on what your target patient is, who you're trying to go after and what type of work you're trying to do, correct? Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that um, is, is so beneficial to me about kind of getting that background data from a practice. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to look at practice records to see where the most profitable people are coming from, both in terms of geography, men versus women, what procedures, but in particular, the age groups. Because if you understand the age groups, there's very different channels to reach them. Um, so again, you know, all digital is, is beautiful for total lead generation, but uh, you're going to be doing a lot of exams and not a lot of bridges and crowns and restorative work. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Now, for somebody that, you know, is maybe starting to, that's newer to the marketing game, it's, you know, maybe it's a new dentist in town or uh, somebody that's transitioned into a new practice, but they're just kind of starting from scratch with their marketing. What, what does the path look like? Like, what's the must do's to get up and running and having a successful marketing campaign? So, you know, obviously you can't just put up a Facebook page and expect that to cover everything, or you can't just build a website. You, there's more that's involved. What, what's sort of the basics to get going? Sure. Um, well, a lot of it hasn't changed over the years. You still have to have a brand. That brand communicates to anybody who sees it, their every experience that they've had with you, everything that they've heard about your practice or what their experience has been when they've been in your office. So starting with that brand, a website's a given. If you don't have a website, it's like not having a phone number these days. It's like you don't exist, right? Exactly. Um, somebody told me, I, I heard this joke at a conference last week, and they said, where's the best place to hide a dead body? Page I'm two of Google. <laughs> Yeah. And so that website is everything. Yeah. Um, and then after the website, um, SEO is great. Yeah, I mean, you need SEO, but it's going to take a long time for a site to develop. So one of the faster things you can do is generate reviews like crazy on Google and Yelp and Facebook. Um, that can actually get to the top of the search lists. If you have a brand new website, you'll appear in Maps if you've got a ton of strong reviews and your competitors are slacking and builds a lot of consumer trust. So I'd start with those three big things, and then frankly, a pay-per-click campaign can just be a fast, like right off the ground way to generate leads. Yeah, and especially if you're not appearing in those top three to five spots on Google results, right? Exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about the website a little bit, because I think this is an area that um, it, it's difficult. So a lot of, I've heard from a lot of dentists that you know, maybe three, four years ago, they spent 10 to 15 grand on a website and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful website, but times change and it, the, the speed of refreshing on websites is increasing. So what's sort of, you know, what are like two or three specific tips you would give someone when they're thinking about their website, thinking about refreshing, thinking about what they need to have to make it as most effective as possible? Um, Boy, great question. It's very easy to get sucked into the template website trap because it seems like a fast fix. Yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, while it is less expensive, it also has less impact on your, your rank and your design, and it doesn't feel authentic to the practice. So for the practices that we work with, they really want something that truly represents who they are and their values and the types of patients they like to work with. So I would say taking your time to do your homework to find a website company that's going to be compatible and build you something that's really custom to, to your practice and your values. That's the starting place. Um, obviously, they need to be technologically advanced. It, it needs to be a company that isn't just about building a site, but knows how to build a site that is optimized for search. Um, knows how to build a site, because optimized for search can mean little things like um, the load speed on a page has a big impact on search. It's not just, is it pretty? So n understanding the SEO that goes into it is big. And then, um, you know, obviously responsive design and all the traditional things that come with that. 
but um, also I think an awareness of your right websites are going to look incredibly outdated in a matter of a couple of years. So be careful not to over invest in a super glossy high end site that you're only going to have to replace three years from now because technology has evolved so quickly. There, I think there's kind of like a, a high ground without being the ultimate elite. Don't get caught up in that shiny object syndrome. Yes. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, take a different approach and talk about dentists that are more established in their career. They've been doing marketing for a while and maybe they're starting to see the results fizzle out or maybe they're mm -hmm. feeling pressures from corporate dentistry or whatever the case, but it's time to do some more advanced things, right? Uh, they want to do something a little more cutting edge. Uh, what, what are some new areas that you have seen people get strong results in uh, that are beyond those basics that we just discussed? Um, boy, great question. Um, in order to go beyond, you almost have to go backwards. Okay. Because the marketplace is so open now with traditional media, people have moved because they all think it's all digital, so they have moved away from direct mail and radio and television. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the market to go capture that arena and really absolutely own it and dominate it. Mm -hmm. Especially for an established doctor, you know, someone that just loves what they do. Maybe they've spent years honing this skill and they're, they're very well trained in implants or in cosmetic dentistry. Um, for example, I have a client in North Carolina. We've worked with him for 10 plus years. He tried and is still in pretty much every media opportunity out there. But he has been on television consistently for the past 10 plus years. And what that man produces in a single month by himself is three to four times what I see with even my high performing dentists. And truly, when you look at where these leads are coming from, it's his brand reputation from traditional media like television, which is then supported by where they see him in other places and going online and seeing the website and reading the reputation. So I think those older doctors, there's actually a lot of benefit in you know, maintaining what they have digitally, but kind of exploring more traditional avenues. It's not just about new. Yeah, and, and you think part of that plays into the demographic that they're going after, the types of people that would be attracted to that medium? Yes, absolutely it is. I mean, there's, sure, the, everybody is streaming Netflix, et cetera, but there's still opportunities, television, radio, et cetera. There's just new mediums and new ways of capturing that audience. Um, and that is not to discount things like obviously pay-per-click and social media advertising. Those are huge and, mm -hmm. and critical. But if we're looking beyond the traditional, or I'm sorry, beyond the, the, the standards yes. that people have to have, I think there's a lot of variety out there. And with that North Carolina example, I think that's, that's a really interesting one, right? But, I, you know, just for clarity, I don't think your recommendation is everyone should go out and try TV, right? It's, so it's very dependent mm -hmm. on the context, the market, the situation. Right. And that's, Completely. And that's where your strategic marketing plan comes in. Right? Exactly. Well, and, and that's what a good plan does is when you're taking that comprehensive look, you can see in any given market what the solution is. Mm -hmm. It's interesting over the years, because I've been doing this for so long, we have tested even taking identical messaging, for example, on a postcard in one market in Colorado and then doing it for another doctor, say, down in Florida even though we're pulling um, mailing lists that match the exact same demographics, the responses can be dramatically different because it depends on the market. So a really good comprehensive plan is not just, hey, my friend did this and it worked well, so I'm gonna do the same thing. It's understanding you know, what your patient's values are and how they communicate in their local area and what media they're exposed to and the costs of the media in your area it is completely different market to market. It's just so dependent on so many different factors. And it starts to, to highlight a question that obviously pops into my mind, which is around measurement, right? So mm -hmm. to understand the effectiveness of any campaign, especially when there aren't consistent results from market to market, and so many factors vary, measurement's key. So talk, I know you're really big on measurement. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. What are, you know, how do you, advise clients in terms of how they should measure, what metrics they should look at, et cetera. I am a data hound. Um, for me, I love the ability to prove to somebody that I did my job and I did it really, really well. Honestly, that's kind of where some of this started. So I'm a big believer in every possible um, thing that you can measure being measured. 
Um, call tracking should absolutely be used in any type of marketing that you're doing, and it should be unique call tracking for each and every medium. Um, sometimes I get this question from doctors where they say, you know, well, how can I have five different phone numbers out there? My patients are going to get confused. And I always say to them, um, I could not tell you my own daughter's cell phone number if you put a gun to my head. Nobody remembers numbers. They're all just yeah. stored. So not worrying about that. Because the call tracking lets you know how many leads you're getting in, but more importantly, taking that next step and reviewing those calls and making sure that your team is converting them and listening to what your patient's concerns and objections are. So um, those two data points are where it starts, but then there's so many more setting KPIs for um, percentage of conversion, uh, obviously production collections, how many of your patients are coming back for a second visit after they've been brought in from your marketing for the first visit? Opportunity cost of uh, people who are canceling and no-showing for appointments. Um, honestly, that's, that's one of the things I love and why we created the Smart Market Dental software is it does all of that automatically. It syncs with your practice management software and it can extract all of those reports that are sheer torture for the front office to try and get those data points that your consultants and analysts are always asking for. So it, it just does it automatically for you so you can monitor your growth. And so in terms of uh, thinking about return on investment, um, it's always tough to open up the checkbook and you know write the checks for the marketing activities, but it, what, what would a good return on investment look like? And it, obviously you could talk about how it may vary across mediums, but you know what should dentists be targeting? So um, I like to see an ROI of two and a half or three to one after at least the first year of doing something. Um, and that's going to be more with traditional media, things like direct mail or, or yeah. television, because they're a little harder to have some of the attribution from where those patients came from when they see you in multiple media. Um, digital, I like to see at least an eight to one ROI, if not more. I mean, the client I was reviewing yesterday, they were at a 15 to one ROI on their online marketing. Um, and when you see those numbers, boy, it's just really hard to argue against changing the budget because it's working. So you keep throwing more in there. So let me, let me voice what I can, I, I'm sure someone out there is thinking right now, which is, hey, you just said two and a half to three to one on traditional, mm -hmm. but eight. So maybe 15 to one on digital. Why would I spend any money on, on traditional when digital is a better return? <laughs> well, because of that very same reason, what audience are we attracting? Um, that ROI looks really good, but ROI also comes from patients who have been established in your practice over the years. So it's that long-term return on investment. And um, I believe that there has to be a mix. If you want to drive a lot of online leads and people tend to say the reason that they call the practice they list the last point of contact that they had with your brand and people are not sitting in front of a television writing down a phone number and then calling you and saying I saw you on TV they then go to your website to check you out they read reviews and so it sounds like digital media online marketing can have a really strong ROI why would I bother to waste my time in some traditional media it's because it's driving that traffic to your online marketing in the first place. But again, that's just year one. Honestly, I've seen some online marketing that takes a little while to ramp up. Um, but if you're not seeing that performance, which you can't tell unless you're measuring, then you need to be killing the low performers. I mean, it should grow. It's not like it wants to stay stuck at three to one. That's, that's kind of my bare minimum. But then you know where to cut and reinvest in the things that are working. And it, it gives you an opportunity to sort of test and see um, what has your strongest performers, not just in terms of leads, but quality of patients. Yeah, okay. that, great, great point there. Um, in terms of marketing budget, uh, what would you, how do you advise your clients? Uh, do you advise them to take a percent of production and invest back into marketing? Do you just look at it based on, hey, if it's working, just keep putting more money into it? Well, in a perfect world, sure, you know, if it's working, just keep throwing more money at it and you'll get a higher return, but that's not how you run a practice. Yeah. Um, I believe in percentages. Now, the percentages are based on collections because you can't spend money that you don't have. There, yeah. there could be a big difference between production and collections. Um, but it also depends on the market you're in. You know, 3% of a mid-level $750,000 a year practice in New York City 
spend very differently than it does in my husband's area where we're in a small rural area and the media costs aren't as high. So um, I've seen, you know, when you really want to get out there and go gangbusters, I've seen doctors do eight to 10% for the first year to just kind of really make a splash. Most will ratchet it down long term in three to 4% of their gross collections, as long as it's performing for them. And when you said the eight to ten percent, are you referring to maybe a, a startup practice or a, a new acquisition? Well, yeah, although it's hard to say seven to eight percent of a startup practice because they're really starting with yeah, zero in yeah. collections. Exactly. <laughs> um, often it's if they want to make a big splash, for example, introducing a new technology. You know, way back in the day when Cirrus was a brand new shiny object, they would do a huge campaign around Cirrus because they were the first ones in the market with it. And it would create this perception of I am the only doctor in the area who can mm-hmm. do it. So it, I guess I would consider that percentage to be just a short term first yeah. to own the market for a particular product, service, technology, and then you can pull it back. Yeah. Um, I know, yeah, social, social media right now is so, it's such a hot topic. Uh, so I want to just pick your brain on that for just a second. Um, what advice do you give to clients that are starting to get into this area uh, in, in terms of where should they put their social media efforts if their time's mm-hmm. limited, what's most important? And then what, how do they integrate that into their, into their more traditional marketing strategy? So um, the traditional, or not the traditional, but the social media channels that they want to look at are the ones that are most popular. I mean, it's, it's just classic ROI strategy. You want to put your eggs in the basket that's going to get you the greatest return. Um, Facebook just hit 2 billion users on average per month. That's crazy. And the baby boomers absolutely love it, which we know is our key demographic. So definitely that. Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, so any advertising on Facebook can uh, automatically go there. Um, Pinterest, I'm seeing, um, I don't see a lot of success on Twitter. I've seen a couple people do well on LinkedIn, but I'd look for the big guys because that's where your audience is. And then in terms of kind of how to get the most out of it is it's all about authenticity. Letting down the walls, which I know is a little harder for the older generation of dentists who believe that there's this kind of very professional distinguished line, but patients today, the whole reason social media exists is they want to see behind the curtain. So any and all of your posting or your ads should be real. They should include real patients from your practice, real team members doing something fun, showing off continuing education that they're taking. Um, Anything where you can kind of let your guard down and they see that you're someone who is passionate about dentistry not just a buttoned up professional. And then the more important thing is asking your patients to be engaged with it. You know, while they're sitting in the chair and they've got their phone in their hands, ask them to go to your Facebook page and follow you. Or um, doing fan building campaigns to incentivize them. There's just, you can't just put it out there and hope that people will respond. You do still have to actually ask people to follow you. And what, what type of content do you recommend that dentists be posting on Facebook? Because a lot of people out there uh, are a little bit hesitant to go, you know, certainly getting on social media, step one, it can be intimidating, right? Because like you said, you're kind of mm-hmm. showing what's behind the curtain in terms of the practice. But how personal do you recommend people get with it? Is it dependent on the individual dentist and, you know, kind of what they're comfortable with? What's, you know, should they be talking about what they're doing on the weekends or is it just keep it professional? What's your recommendation? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, it's got to be something that's interesting and engaging for people. I mean, if doctors go in and they look at the number of you know, likes and comments that they get when, for example, they put up a post about celebrating a birthday in the office versus the one that describes where they went to dental school, um, they're going to see what their audience is actually interested in. So kind of following those cues is important. But I heard this was a great statistic that I got uh, from Mari Smith, who's a huge advisor to Facebook, just last week. Only 1% to 3% of all posts show up organically anymore. Facebook is pretty much making Uh, your page invisible. So if you have something that's an important message to get out there, 
throw a couple of dollars at boosting it. It is critical or no one is going to see it. You can post content all day long and it won't, you, won't do you a darn bit of good. Yeah. Can you explain uh, Facebook Boost real quickly to our audience for those that have not been exposed to it? Well, it is super simple. I'm sure anybody could go online and uh, do a, a YouTube video to see how to boost. Um, but as long as you're an, uh, an administrator on your business page, every single post that you do, you'll see a little blue button that says boost. And then it simply takes you through a couple of steps of choosing your audience. It'll recommend how much you spend. And, um, and it is super, super simple. And we're talking a couple of dollars a day to buy that exposure. And, and that's the key I wanted to focus on was the, you know, it is a, it's paid advertising. Essentially. It is paid but, advertising. But it, it is a low cost way for the time being to boost your message. For the time being, I am seeing the cost per clicks really starting to jump up there. Um, sure. But if you want to be on social media, unless you have created some sort of incredible viral video, you got to pay to play these days. That's right. That's right. Well, um, tell us a little bit maybe about some of the success stories you've seen with uh, clients that you've worked with, um, how they, you know, by doing, going through the strategic marketing plan uh, by focusing on the right activities, doing the right kinds of measurement. Um, you know, tell us about like where they started and, and where they've ended up. So tell our audience about, you know, kind of that, that great, that great work that can be done. Sure. Um, when you have a comprehensive plan, it really allows you to reach your goals specifically. Um, I work with a business coach and he preaches goals all day long because if you don't have a goal, you don't know where you're going. You have no direction and you're never really going to get there. It's aimless. So great example would be a practice that I work with down in um, Alabama. I'm, I'm not going to get too specific and spill all their secrets, but I've been working with them for years and we started with a comprehensive plan that looks at everything from their internal marketing, their traditional advertising, their online presence. And we have slowly, consistently, and measurably um, grown based on this very comprehensive overview and in the past, probably, I think, five years since I've been working with them, they went from two locations to six. And they're expanding into other markets. And that also means that their marketing dollars go a lot farther now because, you know, you have multiple locations. That same message can reach the audience, but you're dividing that cost by three or four instead of absorbing all of it in the single practice. So... For me, that part of the reason that that comprehensive plan approach is so important and setting those goals is because you are continually reviewing and measuring and adjusting. It's not just, hey, I'm going to try the latest and greatest new strategy, that, that shiny object, and throw it up on the wall and see if it sticks. It is constant, never-ending improvement. But when you're committed to it like that, the difference over time, clearly, can um, triple your business or more. Yeah. All right. So last last question area I want to focus on. I know na you know nowadays for dentists that want to do it yourself marketing approach, it's you know let's be honest, it's getting tougher and tougher. And maybe what was possible five ten years ago, well you could do that. Today there's just there's so many different activities out there. It's more complex, um, and you want to make sure you get it right considering the cost and investment. So most most of the time dentists are going to be shopping. For marketing services, right? They're looking to hire someone, not do it in-house. What advice do you give, or what what advice would you give to somebody that's at that level where they're starting to look out there and there's lots of options, there's lots of ways to go? What are the key things that they need to focus on to make sure they make the right investment and the right choice in an agency to help? Um, a couple of things. One, relationship. The, these are people that you're asking to work for. You're sure you're paying them, but I promise you, you're going to get ten times better results when they really feel connected to you and they like you as a person and they understand your business and what you're trying to achieve. So some of that is just plain old gut instinct, you know, a number of phone calls, seeing work that they've done for other people, you know, reading reviews and getting references. So chemistry is big. Um, another huge thing to keep in mind, and this isn't even about finding the agency, it's once you have found it, is you cannot divorce yourself from the process. You cannot just completely hand over your marketing to a group and hope to heck that it works. Do know that you have to stay involved in the process um, because you're a business owner. 
I mean, I can guarantee you that General Electric and Apple do not just hand off their marketing and hope somebody gets it right. They are very, very involved with their brand. Yeah. Um, and then I would really look at a group that provides transparency. What tools are they utilizing to show you that the work they're doing, they did what they said they were going to do? Or if something isn't working, that there's transparency around it, that they own up to it, and that they have clear steps for what they're going to do to adjust your messaging or your medium or your strategy so that it works. So again, chemistry, stay involved, and where is that transparency coming from? You know, building a great ad, lots of people can do that, but it's more the service that goes into it that I think is so much more valuable yeah. in your eventual progress. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent advice, thank you. Um, well, I, I appreciate everything that you, you know, all the advice you've given to people listening. Um, you know, obviously you know this industry so well, you've had so much experience in it, so um, a lot of good stuff in there. Thank you very much. Um, I, I want to give you a chance, uh, I know you have an offer that you want to present to people listening who want to learn more, um, you know, maybe they have some more questions they want to follow up with, so I'll let you go ahead and talk about that real quick. Absolutely. So best thing in the world to do is start by going to our website, goldenproportions.com. It'll give you a feel of what it's like to work with a comprehensive agency, a full service group who looks at the full life cycle of marketing for your patients. Um, and then for those practices who are ready to get serious about marketing, not looking for that, that one shot deal, that one night stand, so to speak, um, we are doing half off the development of our marketing plan. So doctors will save $500 they will get a complete comprehensive plan where we research demographics, we look at media in your market, um, we pull data about your practice so that we are building very custom strategies. So that one they can look at if they go to uh, goldenproportions.com backslash future of dentistry. And then the other offer, because I'm such a, a data hound as I said, is I wanna give people an opportunity to try Smart Market because it's all about making their marketing that they're currently doing more effective, more cost effective, more efficient. So we are offering a completely free two week trial. We'll sync with your practice management software. We'll give you tracking numbers. We will listen to and grade your calls and show you where you're losing opportunity with your marketing. And so anybody who wants to try that same, same domain, goldenproportions.com backslash future of dentistry, we would love to be able to help you. That's awesome. That, that's a great offer uh, for people listening. You absolutely should check that out. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, Zanya, thank you. Any other last words of wisdom or anything we didn't cover that you just want to touch on quickly? Um, well, I think I got to tie back to the actual title of this lecture, which we didn't even really get to about <laughs> your marketing shouldn't be a one night stand. Yes. Um, but it, it really is, if you think about it that way, when you're going for those one shot silver bullets, um, you, you might get some quick satisfaction, but you're not going to feel real good about it long term. That's, that's your one night stand, so to speak. Uh, yeah. It's that long term relationship where you get value and something that you really, really enjoy and has an impact on your practice. So look for that long term relationship. I promise you, you will benefit and you'll feel good about it. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your knowledge. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening.